Hello and uh, welcome back to the channel where I'm joined by Connor again and um, we're going to discuss this weekend's hurling action where we've got finals in uh, the uh, Senior Championship and the Joe McDonough uh, Cup. So um, four teams in action, all hurling this weekend and uh, two trophies up for grabs. So we'll start off with um, what's obviously the, the main event, um, an all-monster clash in the in the battle to win the, the Liam McCarthy Cup um, with Limerick and Waterford. They've already met in the Monster final and Limerick come out on top um, on that occasion. So what way do you see this one going, Connor? Yeah, I'm looking forward to this game, Jerry. I think the All-Ireland final is always a day you look forward to as a, like, as a GA fan. I think particularly in the last few years as a Hurdham fan, you look forward to the All-Ireland final. I think the football ones, okay, they've had a few good finals, but may, maybe not as appealing with Dublin going for six in a row now. But the Hurdham has had three different winners in the last three years. They've had, I think they've had six of the, is it five or six different winners since 2013 with Clare, Clare, Kilkenny, Tip, Galway, and Limerick. So five different winners in the last, whatever, seven championships. So that's a very, very good return, a very, very competitive. It shows it's a competitive championship, you know. So, so fight it. But this game, this weekend is going to be, it's going to be a great game, a great game of hurling, I'd, I'd imagine. I think Limerick. Limerick are going exceptional. I think they've won all. They've won five league games, two monster, three months championship games, and and one All Ireland semi final. So they've won nine games to date this year. They're hoping to win every league and every championship game in the season. That has not been done since 1961, where a team has won every single game in the league and in the championship. I think it was Tipperary in 1961. I think in 1969 and 1970, Cork. They won all their games in 1970, but the league actually carried over. And now from 1969, they drew a game in that. And Kilkenny in the noughties in 2003, they won all, was it five or six group games in the league? But there was a second stage in the league. I think they might have drew and lost a game in that. And then they went on to win all their championship games. And then Kilkenny in 2006, they won every single game of the year, apart from one where they drew with Limerick in the league. So it hasn't been done where a team has won every single league and championship match for 59 years. Limerick will be hoping to do that this weekend. I think they will do it, Jerry. I think they have an exceptional team. I think if you look at the Limerick team, there's not one weakness you could find in the team. Like the goalie, Nicky Quaid, is very strong. The full back line is exceptional. The half back line, they have very good midfield, very good forwards. They have a very, very good bench as well. Like So there's not a weakness in the Limerick team. I think Aaron Galan is an injury doubt. If Galan plays in this fish, Limerick will win the game, I think. But just to go back on that, I just think that. Limerick are not getting enough praise for what they've done so far this year. Like they've beaten four teams in the championship, they've beaten Clare. Tip, Waterford, and Galway. Like Tip, Waterford, Galway, especially. I think they're probably effectively clear, but they're three. But that's they're probably the four best teams, and they've beaten three of them. Do you know what Limerick have? And they bet Tip by seven points. They beat Waterford by three points. They bet Galway by three points. I think they actually played relatively well against Galway. But I suppose there is probably a, a, a narration that there's more in Limerick. Do you know they probably narrate there's more in them now. The problem for Waterford is if there's more in them, they win the game if they can if they can deliver to, up to those standards. But Waterford, on the other hand, are, they're one of those teams where the last two years they've played eight championship matches, didn't win any of them. So it was an absolute disaster for two years. In 2017, they got to an Ireland final with a young team and lost by three points, but pucked the ball away from winning it. They had been very, very consistent in 15 and 16 as well, in 16 in particular. So Waterford have been coming for a while. Two years, last year's absolute write off. Liam Cadds came in there. He won two All Irelands in his two years with Tipperary in 2018 and 2019 with the under 21s and under 20s. He won an All Ireland minor with Tipperary. He's an ex absolutely exceptional manager, as Liam Cadds is. He doesn't take any mess and a no nonsense approach to management. He's got a kick out of these Waterford players. They're playing nice, off the cuff, hard hurling. Do you know, they have good players as well. They have very good. Jack Fagan's been a fine, Desi Hutchins, and those who guys kind of came in from last year and have made a big difference. Austin Gleason, if he plays. I always say with Austin Gleeson, Jerry, if he plays well at all, he's he's unmarkable on his day. He's nearly like a TJ Reid or a Joe Canning or all that. The problem for Austin Gleeson is he hasn't played. Like, I think in 2017 in the semi-final against Cork, he won the second half on his own. He didn't really turn up in the final, didn't play well. The last two years, Gleeson really struggled for form. He hasn't got going. This year, he was okay. There was more in him. You know, He was getting taken off in games. The second half against Kilkenny, there were seven points down. He turned up. They won the game by by, by what, four or five points. He absolutely really, really upped his game. If you look at the lads, like Stephen Bennett is playing exceptional hurling for Waterford at the moment. He's scoring points all around him. Like, so I, I, I do think Waterford 
will compete with Limerick. I just think that like that Stephen O'Keefe is where it goes for Waterford is a great goalie. They weren't playing well at all before this year, but I think Liam Catter has kind of changed that. It's a good voice and outside voice. They're off the cuff, free flow and hurling. I think Waterford, Jerry, I think they'll give it a good shot, but I think Limerick will win. And I'm going to go against the narrative here, Jerry. I think Limerick will win with a good bit to spare. I'm going to say Limerick by maybe six, seven, eight points at the weekend. Maybe a small bit more. I, I do think that Limerick will win by a bit more, but a bit to spare. Okay. Um, obviously, um, Waterford have, have had a, a long drought without um, without winning um, in All-Ireland. And I think, am I right, it's Limerick won it in 2018, but before that they had had a bit of a drought as well. Um, so it, it is a kind of, it, it's not a game where, like, obviously Limerick have won it recently, but they're not particularly two teams that are used to used to winning all earnings, you know. So, so it is, um, it is intriguing. I think just from like obviously in neutral, like I, I no no eggs in either basket really for Limerick or um, Waterford, but probably just as just as the game as as I'll be watching the game on Sunday, I just have a wee feeling that I'll be probably shouting on for Waterford, um, just because just because I like seeing you know runs ending you know like it's been a long time since they won this and whatever um but at the end of the day like if Limerick win you know in my opinion based on the season they've had you know they deserve to win and you know ultimately you know like as you say they've went through the league undefeated they've went through the championship undefeated they, they've won every game and it would be it would be a pity for them you know to to end it on a on a sour note um but I think the neutrals might might just go with Waterford. Um, w- would you say that that might be the sort of the, the neutrals, or do you think it could be just 50-50? Most definitely, Jerry. The neutrals would 100% be going with Waterford as well. I just think, though, if you look at the hurling, it's funny because Gaelic football is much more, is much, is played from far more, is played to a high standard in far, far more counties. Like you'd almost argue 31 counties would play football to a relatively good standard, like in the sense of half from Kilkenny, maybe the rest of them would have decent club championships, like even the, maybe the so called weaker counties would have, would be relatively good championships to have been played, do you know? But football has had two winners since 2013, and Hurling has had five, do you know? So the Hurling is, is actually the one that's far more competitive, and Waterford have been in finals, Cork have been in finals in the last seven years, do you know? Like, so the Hurling is actually is competitive, it is like it's it's, it's more competitive than the, than the football. It is with the way, that, even though there's not as many counties at the top, but the neutrals will be going for Waterford. And what's really maybe this isn't being said as much, Sherry. Waterford haven't won a Munster title since 2010, and that's a bit of a drought for teams. It is 2010, like 10 years without winning Munster is a long time, it is, you know, that kind of way. And now, having said that, now it's kind of been probably being a wee bit hypocritical because I was going around saying the last day how Munster champions do terrible in semi finals, so the Munster champions actually generally do get caught in the next round, but. I said it. If Limerick could have got over the semi-final hurdle, I thought it could have been Galway, it could have been tipped, whoever it was. I thought they were going to win a final, and I'm going to stick to that. I think that John Kyle would be very, very pleased. Like, like last year, there's a narrative that they were playing probably better hurdle than Jerry, but last year they got caught against Cork and Munster. Tip back to Munster, okay, it wasn't maybe a whole lot to spare, but they were, they were, they were, they were saying that Kenny ended up beating. So they lost three games in the National Championship. This year they've won every game, like so they, they're not going bad. Right? It's, it's kind of a narrative that Limerick aren't going as strong as last year. Yeah, they're going to win probably every single match of the league and championship, you know. Like, so I just think that the neutrals will be going for Waterford, though, because they're a county they haven't had a full lot of success in recent years. They won an other than minor in 2013, those same group players won the other than under 21 in 2016. Now, Waterford's record in the under 21 championship has been quite poor in recent years, but the one team that won it was probably the best ever team in the history of the competition, you know. And it's funny because Limerick won the All Ireland with their under 21s in 2017, and they won it the year before in 2015. So those three teams that won under 21 All Ireland from 2015, 16, and 17 are probably going to be making up. They have no visual stats here, but they're going to be a large amount of those players going to be in Crow Park on Sunday. Do you know? And like, I, I think Limerick are probably they're a similar, maybe a small bit similar, Jerry, to the Dublin footballers in some ways, and sense that they kind of got their act together and got hurt and strong around the city and. I suppose Jake McManus has put, has put an awful lot of money into Limerick hurling. That that's not him. Like, that, that, that's he's done absolutely serious work there. He has, Do you know, like and they started to utilize the resources very, very well in the last maybe since 2010. I think that they were very, very poor before then. They were just couldn't make the breakthrough. But since then, they've kind of changed, and it, it, it's it's only really now. It was maybe eight, it took maybe eight years, Jerry, before we might have seen that at senior level. But we're seeing it now when. This Liberty way, I think that they're the real deal to the bees need, Jerry. I think they could be here to stay. 
and I think they're going to win their second All Ireland come come Sunday evening. Um, it'd be interesting. I think for for sort of the Waterford um, perspective, um, looking at it, and you, you kind of think like the great teams that they had sort of in in the noughties, and uh, like the likes of John Milan and all playing, and and you, like all, always like that kind of era to me seemed to be like Cork and Waterford were just at one and all so they seem to be just playing all the time and, and real great battles and like this this obviously an all Ireland final for Waterford after the last couple of seasons they've had and um, it seems it feels a wee bit like it's kind of came out in the war um so it'll be interesting to see just um just how um how things are obviously on uh, on on Sunday, what, what sort of um, what sort of survival um, is there from was it twenty seventeen Galway beat them in the final? Is is there many of that team still around? It's a, a lot of them are Jerry. I haven't looked at the exact figures in depth, but I think that Desi Hutchinson is a new player. Definitely, he's the kind of the, he's the new maybe the the the, um, the wild character. Is then Jack Fagan is a mead man, but he's playing for them. He's another. The two of those lads are kind of two huge additions to the team, but there are no, it's an awful lot of those lads in 17 would still be playing at the likes of, I suppose, the core players back then would have been tied to Burke and, and Austin Gleeson, those lads, they're still there. And I suppose maybe the man, Paul Mann, he's injured, he's a big loss at the moment. He is, you know, he's a, but like Stephen Bennett isn't missing the freeze either, like, so it's hard to make as it much, but Waterford is very much the same. It's, it's a similar ish team now to what was there in 2017. There's not, not a whole kind of change, but just to touch on something there is that, um, you mentioned the Waterford the last two years they haven't really played well and yet they're in the final. Kilkenny Hurters last year there might have been a small element to that. Like in 2017, Wexford beat them in the first round championship and they lost in the qualifiers to, to Waterford after beating Limerick. And I suppose then in 2018 they lost the Leinster final and lost in the Ireland quarter final. So Kilkenny maybe might have been his county, maybe similar. They lost the final last year, similar to that kind of, you know. But I I, I think Mayo in the football is another one. They didn't really do much the last two years. Okay, they got to a semi final last year, but they lost by 12 points and Kerry beat them by 10 points in the Super 8. So, teams, it, it, that's what I think, especially the knockout. Well, not, I know it hasn't been knockout, but if you get your act together, it really it can work. Like, well, kind of, it, it, you can, it can really improve with the team. But I think this Limerick team is driven. I think they're, they're a very, very good coach. You'll have organised in place. The players know each other. They, I just think, Jerry, they haven't a weakness in the team. They were stunned against Kilkenny last year. They, I don't know if they take it for granted, but. They can't, that, that was really a one stop. Like, I, I think, look, Waterford could prove me completely wrong here. They could, they could, they could win the game. And if Waterford win this game, it'll be a really a great team. You know, it'll be a serious year. I think if Waterford win this game, Jerry, it would be their greatest result in their history, to be honest. Do you know what kind of way? Do you know what? I, I do think so. And like, they haven't won it for 61 years. Like, it's really, I suppose, like, whatever about long term off the pitch, this Waterford for now. It's very, very much about living in the present, and it, it's the same for Limerick. Really, like Limerick have maybe that they have good structures now, every now and that. But the reality is, Jerry, it's still this is a young Limerick team, and you don't know how long they're dominant. Like the other counties are doing well underage. Like the, the, every Limerick player needs to get as many All Irelands on the board. Like you have to live in the present, and I think Limerick will feel that they left an All Ireland behind them last year. I, I think they played horrendous against Kilkenny. I said I think that the fact Tip won the final so easy would sicken them as well because they hammered Tip in the Munster in the Munster final. So they they'll be out to the wrongs last year, and I think that they'll just they'll, they'll do enough. Okay, um, so that's the um, the Liam McCarthy um, cup. So we've got the the small matter of uh, the Joe McDonough Cup final, and the the big one in my eyes. Um, depending on how this goes, I might not even watch the, the Liam McCarthy final. It might be on a half. Um, but you, well, you never know. But um, yeah, one o'clock, um, Croke Park, first time. Uh, Antrim have been to Croke Park on All Ireland final day since 1989. Um, Antrim similar to Limerick in that they're coming in this season. I think they're undefeated in league and championship, although they have drawn. Um, but uh, they take on Kerry in the final of the Joe McDonough Cup. Um, so I'll uh, I'll let you give a balance view on it, and then I'll just be biased. So go, go. what do you think? Go ahead. Jerry, you would never be biased on this, would you? But, uh, <laughs> but no, I, I think Antrim, yeah, you, you, you summed it up very, very well there. They're kind of, they haven't lost in the league or championship, like even the ante, the, the, the off the game, they kind of salvaged two late goals in the last minute, and that was a dead rubber game for Antrim. They could have lost that game, but there was no relevance, but the team showed fighting spirit to get two late goals against the odds, and they kind of got the, the point that they needed that day, or they didn't need a point, but they got, they kind of, 
It's, but it's been like that against Carroll, they got a last minute goal. So this seems to be written in the start of this Andrew Green doesn't lose a match. Now, they've played super hurling all year. They have. They, they really have been, been the team off the jump. on it. But Kerry aren't going up there to make up the numbers. They're not like Kerry have good players to it in the ranks. Like some Mikey Boyle, Shane, Shane Conway is probably the best hurler in the jump. on a cup, I'd almost say. He's really, really exceptional hurler and, and phenomenal Mackesy as well. So I do think that there's, there's talent in the Kerry team. They're good enough to win this match. But I do think on paper, Antrim should be winning a hand. Again, as I said, Jerry, it's very, very much about living in the present for both teams. Like, if I was going to say who this match is more important for, I'd say it's more important for Kerry. And the reason for that is because every year the format doesn't suit them. The winners of the Joe McDonough have to play a playoff against the team who comes bottom in the Munster Championship if it's Kerry. If it's any other team, they go straight into Leinster. Now, this year they were saying that Kerry can go into Leinster if they win. So Kerry have an absolutely, have a once probably ever a chance to get into the Leinster Championship under the current format, you know. So they really, really want to take their chances. But Antrim have beaten them three times this year. The first game, I would give Kerry a bit of a pass because the two players have been outbreaks and months in the camp. The other two games were very big games. Antrim definitely won them fair and when they're more accurate gauges. I was up in Dunloyd last year. Antrim hammered Kerry in the Joe McDonough Cup. Kerry, I was actually in Corrigan Park as well last year. Kerry bet them in the league, but Antrim were missing a few ads who were playing for Cushion Doll that day. So would Kerry and the other man send off? Look, would Antrim have won the match with those lads? They might, there's no guarantee at all. But Kerry, Kerry won anyway, is, is the bottom line. I think Pinton O'Connor is doing a good job down there. They're a county, they seem to be consistently able to produce a decent team of underage. Okay, the team, not a brilliant team, but a decent team. So they, they can get a team where you can get maybe four or five lads off and build every year off, which you know that kind of way. And, and at Antrim, though, they've probably gone back a small bit underage, but they've never been better in senior for years in this team. And this, this current team is a very, very good team. And this would be, I think Antrim bet Dublin in 2010. In the All Ireland qualifiers, and they went to Crow Park then to play Cork in the in the in the quarter final. I think if they were to win this game, it would be their biggest result in the championship since since beating Dublin in 2010. Now it wouldn't top beating Dublin; that was knocking out one of the stronger hurling counties, but it would be very very close. Okay, um, so obviously you're talking there about um, Shane Conway. I've been I've been doing one of my preparing for one of my wee videos. I'll I'll be posting it later. So I've been. Looking at this for for um for that, so as he said, Shane Conway is a, a a good uh, a good return here in the in the Joe McDonough Cup this year. He's at two thirty five across the four games. Um, so he had nine points, one eleven, one seven, and eight points. Um, then they have a couple of other. Daniel Collins is at three three, um, across the, the the four games, and um Shane Nolan as well is is uh, come up with two five, um so. On the, the other side, um, Antrim's main man, uh, Kieran Clark, uh, 436 across the four games. This is a great return, like obviously. Um, he's a two, like the first few games, he had 2 8 and 2 7, and then he had 9 points and, and 12 points. Um, Connor McCann as well had, had a good return, 4 9. Um, Nal McKenna is at 1 7, and uh, Michael Bradley's at 1 10. I think eight of those came in the Maeve game at all from play. Um, but one thing I was actually looking at and it quite intrigued me about those four guys is I know we've talked about it before and we were saying about like how you know the, the couple of the more surprise um, teams you know performed well traditionally like like as far as I can sort of remember it was, it's always been Dunloy, Lockheed and Cushion Doll that won the championship except for I know Rosso won it one year and they beat Lockheed whenever Lockheed had like lost about six or seven finals in a row but the, the thing about those four guys that are the top scorers for Antrim in this, none of them play for Dunloy, Luckgill, or um, or Cushendall. Um So, like, I think there's, like, uh, Kieran, Kieran Clark, I think it's Bally Castle, and Connor McCann is actually Craigan, I think. Um, it's obviously more associated with football. And you've got uh, Michael Bradley, St. John's, and uh, Niall McKenna is Sourcefield. So like it's good. Like I, my big worry was whenever like we seen obviously St John's and Ross had good runs in the championship. And um, my pro, my thinking was, this is only a good thing if they're getting better, and it's not a case of the sort of traditional big three getting worse. And the fact that the county team seems to be you know plucking players from other clubs does suggest that like the last couple of years, as you say, you know, Antrim have been losing the teams where they you know. This year they just haven't been. You know they they they've literally been going on the field and beating these teams, and uh, so I'm hoping that it, that it is um, you know the start of something good for for Antrim Hurling. Um, there's obviously you know there's a big support and and the support has been um, 
there's been a lot of talk about it. Whereas, like, you know, normally on room, there's not much said about their games, but like the media is picking up on it, and you know that to me is a good a good sign. Um, the county board are you know very active, um, and what they're doing for for you know this weekend, and you know obviously with it being on all all Ireland Sunday, you know, and it, it obviously you know brings a bit more um, recognition, and it's a bit more high profile. So, like, I think it's. Uh, it's exciting, you know. It's all, it's something that's good, but it it does have the feel for me. It's like you say about Limerick undefeated, Antrim undefeated. It's like like I've seen in so many sports, you know, teams that just blow people away, blow people away, blow people away, and then get to the final, the big one, and don't win it, you know. And that's just that's my fear. That that's genuinely my fear for for Sunday. Um, obviously, I hope I hope it doesn't happen, and I hope you know I'm not going to make any. Secret of the fact that I hope Antrim won, um, but uh, that's my that's my concern for for um, for this weekend. I think Antrim will win, Jerry. Just just to just to be avoiding sitting on the fence, but I I, I put it to say this is probably the way I'm going to. I think Kerry have a much better chance of beating Antrim than Waterford do beating them. Like, do you know, I think that I think I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Kerry did win this game. I think Antrim will win it, but I think they'll really have to work for it. Like I'd be I'd be surprised if the game isn't very close coming to the last ten minutes. So I'd, I'd be surprised if Antrim blows out the water to be honest. Do you know, I think like Jerry. Uh, one more thing is there is a bit of a buzzer in Antrim, but for the first time, and I suppose I'm only seen on social media, there seems to be a lot of genuine support in Kerry for the hurling team for once. Do you know, which is not common. I think after the footballers, the fact they got eliminated meant that Kerry people had no had no kind of they had no team in China. That was a big surprise. So I think a lot of people kind of they saw the hurlers were okay. And that was the kind of like I know Antrim have had the Antrim are more traditional hurling company than Kerry definitely for definite they are. But Kerry have like th- th- them getting to an Ireland final in Crow Park is a, is completely new territory for them. It is like they haven't even been at the stage where they've been competing with the big teams. Like Antrim, okay, a- Antrim maybe haven't won a Ireland, fair enough, but they've been in finals and and they've competed with the teams. They, like Antrim, often there've been many many occasions. Like we could be sitting here all day talking about times where Antrim competed and were very close to being a big team that they didn't do it, but. Yeah, especially in the league, especially like Antrim, I think they beat Galway one year in 2006 in Caseman Park, and they beat Westford in the league. And Antrim are, are a good. Like Antrim have Antrim would have been at both Kerry and the hurling world maybe in recent years, but this is a big, huge occasion for Kerry and for them to get the Leinster Championship. I have to say, Jerry, whoever wins this game, it'll be as a result of hard work maybe done in underage and had structured in the county. Like it won't be a fluke, and I think whoever wins this game definitely deserves to be a Liam McCarthy. I think Antrim edge it up. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know the the Liam McCarthy. Like at the end, at the end of the day, like would you rather win the Joe McDonough Cup or you know play in the Liam McCarthy? And, and I, th- I don't think there's anybody in that room that would say they wouldn't want to be playing in the Liam McCarthy Cup. Do you know what I mean? It's it's the way it's the way for growth. And like in recent years, like Antrim have have got to Christie Ring Cup finals. They've played in this Joe McDonough Cup and. Like they've never even really done that. They haven't like the Joe McDonough Cup. This is only the third season of it, but I think the first year they were almost relegated out of it. They had to play. I think it was possibly Meath in a playoff, um, and then last season I think they were they were third out of five um, in the group stage. So obviously missed out as well. But they've played in Chris Daring Cup finals over the last couple of years, and I think Carlo beat them and Meath beat them, and you know it's it's kind of like, like traditionally kind of like. Antrim obviously would have, would have probably been expected, but it felt for a long time like Antrim were, were you know, moving closer to that pack than they were to the top pack. Yeah. And I think from an Antrim perspective, to get back in to playing those teams would be a big boost to the county. And also, like, we, we've got this far, we've got this length in the final and, like, sort of the talisman Antrim heard in over the last sort of like, decade or so, Neil McManus um, hasn't hasn't put the ball in this competition for us this season, like you know. So, um, it, it, it is encouraging to see people stepping up. You know, where like every time you looked at an Antrim match, it was Neil McManus was it felt like he was carrying the load, and uh, you know all our players have stepped up. So, so that's encouraging. But at the end of the day, if we don't win on Sunday, you know it's going to feel like it's been a bad year. Although obviously the league. You know, whenever it gets round to, to play in first division in the in the in the league next year, you know, we'll probably forgot. You know that yeah, you know the disappointment of the Joe McDonough Cup, but 
it feels like everything else has gone right, so we we want to keep that momentum going. I think there that um, Andrew last year made a lot of progress, even though it didn't necessarily show in the results. I think in the championship especially, they look like they're a good team. I think that they played West Mead in the last round in Mumbai, and they'd got a very, very good win against Opti away in Tullamore the week before, and they, they didn't do this any justice against West Mead at all. West Mead blew them away, and it was 29 points 21, but West Mead kind of got ahead early, and they kind of kept plugging more and more away, and then Antrim got a man sent off, and West Mead went up and won fairly comfortably, you know, but I think last year they made a progress. Now, if they had beaten West Mead last year, they wouldn't have beaten Leash in the final. I don't think I think Leash would have beaten them, but this year, as I said, it's very much about living in the present for the Antrim team, and I think that they can, um, I think they can win on Sunday, def, def, definitely. Now, I think it's very important for Antrim that Caseman Park gets built. I think they may have, have a 23-24 to have Caseman Park, and I think when Caseman Park is built, it's very, very important that Antrim Herders are in Division 1. I think that that's that that's the huge thing. Like, there's no point having Case and Park like with no disrespect, but there's no point having Case and Park if you're not going to be playing the top team. Like and like if you if you're having Case and Park and I'm not going to pick a county, but Antrim are playing one of the lower hurling counties. I don't think it's going to get 200 seagulls into the match, Jerry. Do you know? While if they're playing Kilkenny, you're playing Tipper, playing Galway, or playing Waterford, you're looking probably at thousands of people going to the games. Do you know? Like a genuine interest around the city. So. And I think that probably applies to Gaelic football as well for Antrim. I think that Antrim and Gaelic football have to be, well, they're in Division 4 now, they definitely have to get out, but they have to be around Division 3 and pushing, pushing for Division 2 when when Caitlin Park gets built. I think it, it, it's very important that, like, to be honest with you, Jerry, if Antrim are only playing in Division 4 and Division 2A, there's no need to have a Caitlin Park. Really. Like, it's not going to, like, you know, you, may, you can you could build to say the any club grounds realistically, but if Antrim are going to get up to, if, if they... If they want to be a, a big county on and off the pitch, they need to be. They, 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 that's what it is. It, it, you can't. I don't. I don't think you can have one route to the reach. You know what I'm saying? Well, it, it is. A, it is obviously a big step, and so it is now finally at the stage where it's, where it is looking good. Um, I think previously, like I, I've been to like hurling games at um, at Kissman Park, you know, and like I remember, like one day I think it was maybe Limerick in a league game, and and. Like I've been to like Ulster finals where like it was generally always seemed to be up room and down, but um, like you as you say, you know there wasn't there wasn't massive crowds, but I think part of that possibly as well could be to do with the fact that hurling traditionally isn't really played in the city. You know, it is it is obviously you know the the um, the Gilfast Dam project and that there, you know, is, is hoping to, to improve that a lot more. But like it would be the sort of strong strong point of Antrim Hurling would be North Antrim. But you know, as we say, St John's and Rossa have um, have good good seasons. We've we've seen all our players coming into the Antrim team from city teams. Um, St Enda's again, they're in Glencormley, and they you know they're grow, growing and growing. Um, and and hurling and, and uh, football. So you know, casement is casement's going to be important, but. Um, Definitely, uh, there's the basis. Like I think Antrim's the second biggest county in Ireland um, in terms of population, so there, there's a base there. And you know, at the end of the day, nobody wants, as you say, nobody wants to go and watch, you know, two teams that are rubbish, or you know, like if it was Antrim getting hammered by good teams. So you know, to, to make it a success, as you say, you do need to get um, things right on the on the field and you know they have an opportunity to, to move towards that on Sunday so we'll see we'll see what happens there but yeah so with the two two hurling games the final hurling games what is there is there possibilities will these games go to extra time or is there possibilities of replays probably not in the tight schedule is there no it's extra time in the penalty show or whatever it be but I have yeah. to say one thing that I'm very disappointed about I don't think I, I, I'm informed that the Antrim players have been like, characters have been told they can't even stay and watch the second game in, in Pro Parkinson. So I think that's very disappointing for the players. Uh, I see I did have seen that actually when I was just never mentioned it. Um I don't know, it's it it just like it's it defies logic. Like the size of the stadium Pro Park is you could literally like there's no need for you to be sitting anywhere near anybody like and even if the even if the Gleandrum lads all sat in one area and the Kerry lads also like they're going to be sitting there in the same changing rooms, they're in the same buses, they're in the same hotels. It's I, I don't know. It's it, at the end of the day, this the whole COVID thing has you know it's obviously something that has to be respected and people's health is most important. But at the same time, you know sometimes logic doesn't necessarily come into it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'd like yeah. Hopefully it all goes well. But we haven't seen actually 
it hurt in her football. I think bar one game in the Christian Cup, we haven't seen penalty shootout at all, or even very little extra time. Like so, I, I, it would be ironic if we started seeing and now in the finals. I know in Westmead there was no real extra time penalties, and then both finals suddenly went to extra time in, in Westmead. Like so, finals is where it gets nervous, and yeah, we might see a few penalty shootouts this weekend. But yeah, look, sure, gonna go with Limerick and Antrim and Jerry. Who are you gonna go with to win? So who do you think will win? We'll put the question on you. <sighs> Well, I I hope that Waterford and Antrimon, and I think Limerick and Antrim will. Yeah, that's a very very yeah. good answer. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So my uh, my thanks to Connor for coming on and uh, discussing the the two the two big games. Um. Well, obviously we'll be, be back next week to to talk about the results unless Antrim got beaten. I I'm just shot on my YouTube channel there, and. Uh, but uh, and then we'll obviously we'll have the um, football stuff next week as well, and I will also, as I say, have the Andrew and Kerry video out soon, um, and you'll be able to find that on the YouTube channel and stuff. So thank you, Connor, and thank you everybody watching, and uh, we'll uh, we'll be back next week. So uh, Andrew Mabu. <laughs>